This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. It's good to be back. I still have uh, the one in the can that I did from December. I still need to try to edit next week to get up. So this next week that I've got two to get up. But we have gotten a second badge of honor for the ministry. That the podcast that we uh, did yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, has already been knocked off of YouTube. So we have made the overlords very, very unhappy. Uh, at the same time... Uh, those that watch us on YouTube, guys, you need to jump over to rumble.com slash biblical life TV. Go ahead and subscribe there. We're in the process of migrating everything over there as well as some other areas where I'm, I'm learning to have backups of my backups of my backups. And so we're looking at various different ways of making everything available. As well as when we redo the biblical-life.com site, everything will be available in MP3 audio that everybody can just download for free. And I'm working on having it categorized and, and everything else to where it's easy to get the series that you want and download. And hopefully within six months, we're going to have everything that I have ever done since 2001 up there. Just to feed the hungry. We've got a whole lot of great things planned. In fact, we're probably at the end of this month, we're going to be able to tell the contractor, go ahead and get working on phase two. And uh, Lord willing... You know how they're saying, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. We're hoping to have everything in place by the fall of next of this year. And uh, there's a lot in between now and then, not only the construction, but the television equipment and the, and the you know, everybody needs chairs. We're not going to do like the original when they were establishing the church under Roman law. Is Constantine got to sit down and, and the preacher got to sit down, but everybody else had to stand up. We're actually going to kind of reverse that. And I'll stand and y'all will sit. But we're looking forward to that. Now, today's message is getting free of the tentacles of Mystery Babylon, and it is tentacles plural. Uh, the machinations of the enemy is thorough. They have had thousands of years of figuring out this strange critter called the human race and how to control. And uh, we find the mandate given to us in the end times in Revelation 18. 4 and 5. <clears throat> and the apostle John said, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sin has reached the heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And uh, in fact, I just this last week wrote a forward to Doug Hamp's new book and uh, dealing with the power of remembering. In the Bible, when God remembers the dust flies. There are strategic times in redemptive history that God remembered his covenant and nations were decimated because he remembered his covenant. And we're, there's coming a time that God is going to remember the iniquities of Mystery Babylon. That cup has gotten all the way full. And when that happens, God says, that's enough. And that's when the fur begins to fly. 
And I don't know about you, but if I'm on, I don't want to be riding the beast that the first starts flying off of. Okay. Now what's interesting is this mandate to come out of Mystery Babylon, as this is it's written in the Bible there, wouldn't it be so great if we were just living in a city called Babylon and we could pack up our car and just drive out of that thing knowing that this is the city limits and I'm out of that city I can shake the dust off my feet when I leave out of there, and then I'm free and clear. Oh, that'd be easy. But how many know end time stuff ain't easy? It's a challenge. We need to understand that Mystery Babylon is a global thing. I know I've got friends and colleagues. I love them, I respect them, but how many know that now this is hard to understand in this day and hour, I have people that I can love and respect and fellowship with that on some points I don't agree with. You see, I'm awakened, I'm not woke, okay? Woke are zombies that go after anything with brains, where the awakened understand the whole process of debate and we're at different places and we're looking at different things and we give each other the freedom to do that. The Hebrews that came out of Egypt, when we see the council of the Sanhedrin in Jesus' day, they understood that there was strength and diversity. That sometimes we're all seeing and we all just have our own snippets of stuff. And boy, it's so easy to get into a rut with that snippet that you don't see anything else. That's how denominations are started, by the way. I tell you what, my rut is the only rut, and it is the blessed rut. <laughs> now I'll chew the head off of anybody that messes with my rut. They'll mess with you. They will protect the rut over the reputation of Jesus sometimes. It gets to that place. That's a whole other ball of wax because the institutionalized church is on track to be having centers to receive the mark of the beast one day if they don't repent. And we are like Abraham, the first Hebrew that walked out of Babylon. And it's a strange new world that we're going into places that we have never seen, looking for something that we could never have dreamed of. And Almighty God said, get out and I want to show you something great. That's where we're headed. I remember... Years ago, one of the most prophetic women that I've ever known in my life, Dr. Mary Ann Brown, called me one day, and she said, Mike, what God is getting ready to do, and this was like 2004, 2005, she said, when God is done with the church, with the real church, it will look nothing like what we call church today. I agree. It, it's got to change. We got to change. Because God is restoring one of the prophets talked about there was a hedge in the gap, or a gap in the hedge. And he was weeping because there was no one to stand in the gap. But what did that guy say that was standing in the gap? Restore. There are, there are prophets right now, there are apostles right now standing in the gap, crying out, restore, leave Babylon and go back to the ways of God. And the ways of God do not begin in Matthew, they begin in Genesis. And it's the whole counsel of God. Oh, I'm not going, that's, that's a diatribe I could easily go off on right now, but I'm not going to. There are those that teach that America is mystery Babylon, yes and no. Has it been used this past century to, to using the military industrial complex and the central banking system and all these different things to help establish mystery Babylon in the earth and give it a greater stronghold? Absolutely. But you know, it's also working in the European Union. It's on steroids in the European Union because they have no constitution to protect them. And the guy who's ahead of it sounds like he's operating, you know, he is specter. In fact, I think it was his great-great-grandpa, if I remember right, was actually one of the high-ranking Nazis that somehow or another avoided Nuremberg. A lot of the key ones did because they had the political power to do it. They're talking about the Great Reset. The Great Reset is, welcome to Babylon, you're now our slaves. You will own nothing 
and you will be happy. Okay? That's a matrix of control. And see, the matrix of control today that is trying to bring down America, which is trying to bring down the Western world, is something called Marxism. Marxism started with a false Jewish Messiah named Jacob Franks, who hated, not only did he hate Moses and the Torah, boy, a lot of the Christians would get along with him, you know, oh, Torah bad, Torah bad. But he said all law was bad. And he wanted to burn down everything. Oh, Mike, we couldn't have that in America. Well, you know, it's interesting. And what happened on 6-1 is a whole, I think there's four groups of players on 1-6. On Did I say 6-1? 1-6? See, my dyslexia is kicking in. It does that with numbers sometimes. We have four levels of players. I believe that we had FBI operatives there. Then when you look at the modus operandi, uh, the guys in black, Antifa. Then you have two groups of what Saul Alinsky called useful idiots. One group of useful idiots just want some place to have a reason to tear stuff up. And the other ones, well, the Capitol's open and they're waving us in. Let's just go on in. I thought, set up, set up. I am running for the hills. You had all four of those and what they're in their, they're like the old Pharisees, they're ripping their clothes. It was an insurrection. No. It was a black flag. Black flag operation with two pro groups of protagonists and two groups of useful idiots. Let's just call it for what it is. Was it right? No. It wasn't right. Nor was our previous pre president calling for it. And let me tell you something. If he would have called for it, there were a million people that could have probably got it done in D.C. They could have overwhelmed everything. Didn't happen. 400, maybe probably actually really about 100, compared to over a million. I mean, a million can get something done if they're on the streets. Okay. But we see on the flip side that the other side can burn down cities and all this, but they're protected. Well, we have guys sitting up there right now that are pri political prisoners of war. We had politicians raising funds that those that were burning down cities got their bail paid. Marxism, okay? Marxism, Maoism is the preferred matrix of control that they're trying to instigate worldwide. Now, way back in the 90s, in studying all this stuff, I knew that the Luciferian elite were planning taking America outside this, away from the center stage of being the world power. And it goes all the way back to Nixon and Henry Kissinger when they began tra the greatest transfer of wealth in the human history is when our own politicians gave corporations benefits and bonuses, tax breaks, for moving our jobs over to China. And it caused the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of the world. Our guys did it. Why? Because they were being bribed or whatever, enhanced by the corporate world to do that because much of the corporate world is actually part of the Luciferian system. They're international. They could care less about America. Why cater to 360 million when you can go over here and cater to 1.4 billion? Because they worship the bottom line. Okay. But there's arguments among the elite even today, as far as I can tell, because there are guys, and I mean, they well, you're talking about the Jewish elite. Let me tell you something. The, the Luciferian elite come in every color. They come in every color. They come in every ethnic background. There are Asian Luciferian elite. There are African Luciferian elite. There are European Luciferian elite. There are Jewish Luciferian elite. Satan doesn't leave anybody out of those that he can pull into the system. And now that China has it, 
You see, the plan was to implode America, and then we would become that phoenix rising up out of the ashes because there are more oil reserves still in America than there are in Saudi Arabia. Okay? You implode it, you reboot it, you wipe away Christianity, you wipe away the Constitution, and now you can go ahead and reboot as a pagan utopia called the new United States. <coughs> China doesn't want that. It says, no, I, we think that we'd like a century or so, if not more. You know, Hitler was after a thousand-year reign. How I many know that didn't last very long? Jesus said, you know what, there's only going to be one thousand-year reign, by the way, and it ain't going to be you. So if this thing is global, I have not found a um, shuttlecraft going to Mars yet. If this thing is global, how are we to come out of Babylon? That's an honest question. It's everywhere. And its tentacles are into everything. It's in the church, it's in politics, it's in law, it's in finances, it's in university. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, it's a poor fella to do. Well, you got to first define the problem, then diagnose the problem, and then come up with a solution, right? Isn't that the basic law? Well, the first thing we need to know is that God created man in a tripartite nature. And Mystery Babylon has woven its tentacles into every single part. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, and 3, or 23. Now this is a salutation for Paul, but Paul brought out a very interesting thing. Being the Torah scholar that he was, he knew we were spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He said, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. How is our spirit, soul, and body going to be preserved blameless? You got to get the spirit, the soul, and the body out of Babylon. Okay? Oh, I wish I could just do a Doctor Who thing and create a extra spatial dimension for us just to go and create a pocket universe away from all this stuff. But there is such a thing as a pocket kingdom where you create the kingdom of God around you. We were praying about that this morning. But I want you to look at Genesis with new eyes just for a minute because we're spirit, soul, and body. Genesis 3 was the infection of mystery Babylon into the soul or to the spirit. That when man fell, he was infused with the iniquity force. He was separated from the presence of God, and he was hooked up to the kingdom of darkness. At that moment, God the Father was separated, and man got a new nature in the Garden of Eden. It was the nature of Lucifer, the iniquity force. And so Mystery Babylon infected us in the Garden. Genesis 6 is the next one, the next salvo of the enemy. Affecting DNA. That if you really, really know what's going on with Genesis 6, you can see the echoes of it going on. Genesis 6 was the first transhumanist movement to create a, a neo-human species. Opposite, but what they were promising was not just homo noeticus, but they were promising homo deus. The same promise in the garden, you shall be as gods. And they came down and they said, we are gods and we will make you like us. That's why the, the Sumerians thought they were their gods that came down. They're progenitors. It's actually out of Sumeria that modern evolutionists, because they have realized that there has not been enough time in the universe to cause evolution to happen. Impossible. So somebody had to stop by in their science bus and stir the pot, and create man that way. But that circular logic, if there has not been enough time in the universe for us to evolve, how did they evolve? 
Don't confuse the science with facts. The watchers came down and started their transhumanist movement. Not only were they breeding, but we find out from the book of Jasher that they taught men how to splice DNA to create new species. Many believe that's where they came up with the legends of the Minotaur and everything else was genetic alterations. And that when God broke the canopy, there was a change to everything alive on earth to make it harder to do that. That's one of the reasons when the UFO started showing up, they were interested in reproduction. Well, reproduction is pretty simple. Unless you're trying to figure out safeguards that God installed when man went from living a thousand years to living 120. What safeguards God put in there to keep DNA from being altered. Okay. We're also beginning to find out the rush, and this, this, totally, this totally blows away evolution. DNA has a shelf life. And we're approaching probably within the next hundred years the end of DNA. That's how short time is. And so if they want to continue, their logic is we need to make this a triple helix, reinforce it, called Nephilim, triple helix, okay, to inject something new to refurbish DNA so that we can go beyond what God put a time limit on how long man was going to be here. There's probably some people watching the video and they're saying, say what? <laughs> we got a whole bunch of stuff on this already, guys. Catch up, okay? Genesis 11. God divorces humanity. And the supernatural government of humanity is handed over to principalities and powers that fell at the Tower of Babel and aligned themselves with Nimrod. This not only represents governance but influence over the souls of humanity. Second heaven entities affect your soul. Everything is soulish. Satan is known as the mind blender, that he, that he blinds the minds to keep you from truth. That he can create strongholds within the soul. That we've got a warfare with. It's all about the soul. In fact, many of the ancients and the Greeks talked about how there were muses... And Muses wasn't talking about, you know, Mary inspires me to write poetry or something, okay? Although she would if I could write it. Uh, but they were daughters of Zeus that would come and whisper in the ears of men to inspire them for certain things. Hugo de Garris, and I, I got to meet him once down at True Legends, in his books he talks about how that all day long he feels this anointing and inspiration to do the work that he was doing on AI and transhumanism. And then he would fall asleep at night, awakened with night terrors, that what he was trying to do would actually happen. That's principalities and powers whispering in the ears of scientists and politicians. And then the principality wars, the principalities and powers govern every nation on planet earth to include Israel today. The only way out of that sadness is through the completed work of Messiah, where you're translated out of the power, out of the authority of the kingdom of darkness into to the kingdom of his dear son. Okay? Contract and covenant. Now, that means every aspect of the way that we think, the way that we feel, all of that is under the, because how many know that who controls Mystery Babylon? How about principalities and powers and Lucifer and all the bad guys, supernatural bad guys? And so we got to look at, I got to untangle myself from all of that, Andy. Okay. And sometimes you look at that and you're kind of feeling like Barney Fife with only one bullet in your pocket. <laughs> Andy, I don't know. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. But they are powerful through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And if Apostle Paul was writing that day, he says, cutting off and slapping back some tentacles too. Amen. The mystery of Babylon. Now, I've already quoted this, uh, Colossians 
Spiritually, you've got to start spiritually. If you don't start spiritually, none of the other is possible. The only freedom is in Jesus. And if you say that Jesus was nothing, then you have no hope. Amen. <laughs> you know the old saying, being running down a lot of hockey creek without a paddle? That's what you are without Jesus. There's no hope. There's no, that was the almighty solution. It's encoded in all the Word of God going all the way back to Genesis 3. It's encoded. He is the kinsman redeemer. Without him, there is no access to the kingdom. And you're either a citizen of one kingdom or the other, and there's no neutral ground. The Bible says he has delivered us from the power, from the authority of darkness. That when I get saved spiritually, they're no longer my masters. Jesus is. He's my king. Now the problem is, I have been trained by the old taskmasters and I still think the way they think. Okay. Now I want you to listen. I'm going to read Isaiah 53 with new eyes. Because in Isaiah 53, when you examine it with the tentacles of Mystery Babylon and how they get into a spirit, soul, and body, the cross is the cure for it all. God's not going to have to do another work. It's us learning to access what he has already done. <coughs> and it's not found in easy believism. I think a lot of times we got to be like Jacob that we wrestle God all night and then he touches the, the hollow of our thigh and we, walk, we, we get up with a different walk and a new name is right now where the remnant is today. God is wrestling with us saying, let me in! Let me into your churches. Let me into your theology. Isn't that a crazy thing for God to have to say? But yet with Thessalonica, he's on the outside knocking to get in. Not Thessalonica, Laodicea. I'll get it right here in a minute. He's knocking. He's, Jesus, because of the affluence and wealth, he finds himself on the outside trying to get in. Of course, there's a whole lot of other things with that scripture I'm not going to get into today, but that's very apropos. There's a lot of places. If Jesus was beginning his ministry today, how long would it take for the fact checkers of the overlords to begin censuring Jesus and declaring what he said not true. How many Christian television stations would he be kicked off of? How many churches would the door be closed to him to minister? At least, you can say what you want about the, the first century period. They had enough sense that when Jesus as a rabbi stood up to read and the minister, they let him do it. The modern church, don't rock the boat. Don't affect the offering. <laughs> Come on now. There's been times, I want to I learn how to preach like Jesus. There are times when you, when you preach like Jesus, everybody leaves you and you turn to your disciples and say, you leaving too? That's preaching like Jesus. Oh, well, this isn't in my notes, but it's good. That's okay. Starting in verse 1. Who has believed our report? We could sit there right now, and Isaiah is looking at Israel and asking the same thing. Who has believed our report? Okay. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground, who has no form or comeliness, but when we, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. He is a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. How many know griefs and sorrows has nothing to do with personal sin? It may have to do with sin in the world, but it has to do with the effects of what sin did to the human soul in living in a sinful world. 
how the tentacles of Mystery Babylon get in. When the tentacles get in, they cause grief, they cause sorrow, they cause rejection, they destroy families, and at the same time they're doing it, they will say, but we're the solution. Never waste a good emergency. And it said, as we hid as it were eyes from him, he was despised, we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Was he smitten of God and afflicted? Yes. But it was because of our sins that were laid upon him. When he began to take on our sinfulness, the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus on the cross. You have two choices. It's either poured out on him or it's poured out on you. That's why we have been delivered from the wrath to come. Jesus already bore it for us. Okay. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by our stripes, by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He showed us spiritually that what Jesus did at the cross is not just about getting you to heaven. It's about getting you out of Babylon now. Amen. Right now. It is a now word if we will use it. It's, and all this is not automatic. You've got to apply it the same way that the priest had to apply the blood when there was a sacrifice. And we are the priesthood. We've got to labor to apply it to our lives. And sometimes those things that need to die, that need to be crucified, will fight you all the way, saying, you need me, you need me, you need me, you need me. Boy, how they can cry too. But Mike, I was your favorite. Nah. Die, die. <laughs> My favorite is Jesus, okay? I cannot get enough of him. <sighs> we sang that song this morning, I Need Thee Every Hour. Boy, do I ever. And it comes in two ways. Sometimes it comes in the blessing. And I'm reminded of, I had some friends when I was over in Europe in the military, and they had three boys, and they had a paddle hanging on the wall that said, I need thee every hour. And we need, and I, oh, you want God to correct you? He proves I'm his kid. You're worried about, are you saved? Does he correct you? You're daddy's kid. Okay. People always, I just don't know if I'm saved. The Holy Ghost ever get up in your business about something? Well, yeah. You're his. He wouldn't do that to a sinner. He would just convict them generally of sin and show them the need for a Savior. Guys, the price that Jesus paid on the cross addressed all three levels of entanglement uh, in, in humanity by the dark kingdom of darkness. Application and, implement, and implementation of this new freedom is not automatic and must be developed in our lives. At the point of salvation, the point that you said, I need a Savior. Jesus, come into my life. And I, I don't think we're, I, I think it doesn't take 30 seconds to lead somebody to Jesus. It probably really takes about 30 minutes. Because there's a whole lot to unpack. You need to repent. You need to surrender. You need to renounce. And so one of the problems we have, in fact, I've got a book in my library. I'm still trying to find time to go through it is, how do we preach to the unsaved church? Because they, they got their Willy Wonka golden ticket. They got a ticket to ride. They just don't know that that ride is the, the beast of the whore of Babylon. Because they've been sold another Jesus through easy believism. Wesley had to fight with that in his day. Easy, easy believism will send people to hell. There, there is a commitment and there's a wrestling and there's a fighting. But the moment you get saved... You have been disconnected from hell's dominion and you've been put under the dominion of a new king. 
and his name is Jesus. But how many know that if I was, let's say I was the wild boy of the Ozarks, okay, and I was raised out in a barn, I was the Ozarks version of Tarzan, okay? And so I'm 13, 14, 15 years old, and they tamed this wild boy, and okay, human okay, yo, human okay. And this family adopts me. I got a learning curve on how to live the way my adopted family lives. It's called sanctification. I've been separated from the world and brought into this family. And now that I bear the Father's name, I've got to learn how to act like the rest of the family. Not like the heathen that was raised in the barn. Okay. Now, the first, and I've done it this way to deal with the soulish aspect, mentally, emotionally, and judiciously, now, I'm not sure if judiciously is the, right, is the right version of the legal system that we need to come out from under. The denizens of the second heaven influence humanity on many levels. And the first one is the legal level. And in the Western world, we have to deal with a plan that was brought up by the Pope, the Queen of England, and the centralized banks. It's called the corporate scheme. Okay, very few people know about that. Did you know that you're a walking corporation? And that you're a member of a corporation? And that your birth certificate is traded on a special place in the stock market? How in the world do you think that Mystery Babylon would sell the souls of men? You got your own stock. Now, there are a lot, and I, you know, I've got friends that go around teaching you and, and the, the, this will probably get me kicked off of YouTube again, but authentication, that's one aspect. There are other legal things that, that can be done, but authentication, let's say that you have taken complete control of the straw man and you are now fully authenticated, okay, whatever it's called, authenticated. You can still be a slave to Babylon. Amen. Hell does not care about that piece of paper in your pocket. It doesn't care that if you show a copy of your driver's license, you have diplomatic immunity. It doesn't care because it still has 19 other tentacles into you and can work you like a puppet. If we separate everything from the spiritual dynamic, you always end up a slave. If it, does, if it is not Christ-centric and what he did for us on the cross and kingdom-centric, you always end up as a slave to Mystery Babylon. So let's open up some of the other cans of worms. Thought life. Oh, Mike, are you a part of, part of the thought police? That's the Holy Spirit's job. But let me tell you something. While we were that kid raised out in a barn... We were influenced with the philosophy, his ideologies, cultures that flow from the Tower of Babel. Every aspect of our society. In America, when the Masons put in God we trust on our money, they were not talking about Yahweh Elohim. They were talking about the God of Freemasonry. And there is a principality in power over America. There are, there are Baals over America. There are Baals over Israel, over England, over all the nations. And the only way to get out of that is Jesus. You become a citizen. You see, first I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And then my secondary citizenship, if you will, is the United States of America. Or I should say, these United States of America. You see, I am a Republican. <laughs> More than those that bear that name, I believe in the Republic. But it is important to renew our minds to the Word of God. 
Because like Zig Ziglar said, we need a check up from the neck up. We have stinking thinking. That was Moses' whole problem with the children of Israel. He got them out of Egypt, but they still thought like slaves. So much so that he just went and spent 40 days on the mountain. He comes back and poof, there's a golden calf, which they learned in Egypt, and they were calling that golden calf Yahweh. He comes down and says, Aaron, how did this happen? Aaron says, they threw gold in the fire. Whoop, there it is. They were slaves saying, if I'm free, i got to be free like my former masters. That still makes you a slave to that master. Because Egypt at that time was the epitome of Nephilim doctrine brought to fruition in a nation. They worshipped the watchers and the Nephilim just under different names. And it was a civilization based upon the doctrines of demons. Well, you can't live by the doctrines of demons and not be subject to the demons. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I know. God says, I'm going to give them through Moses. Now, the first five books of Moses, especially the first four, are unlike any other portion of the Bible. Right, and I, the Word of God is inspired from Genesis all the way down to Revelation where it says the end. That means we end up in a new heaven, a new earth, and the devil can't cause any junk to happen after that. It's just the end, eternal bliss. Got to love that. But the first four, when you understand who Yahweh Elohim is, it's Jesus, Okay. He delivered his people. He sat down. Jesus sat down with Moses and said, take up a pen and write this down. The antidote to the mystery Babylon of Egypt was the Torah. Torah is in properly translated law for us English-speaking people. And the Hebrew... It means the loving instruction of the father, and it paints a picture. The Hebrew paints a picture, and it's of a dad teaching his son how to shoot an arrow and hit the target. And so, first time junior sits there and pulls that back, he falls short of the target. Torah would be the father taking him in his arms and raising up the bow and say, shoot a little higher next time. That's what Torah means. But you get to New Testament times. The Greeks couldn't understand. They didn't have a word for that. So they came up with the same word that we get orbit from, how the planets orbit around the sun. Like this is the track that you're supposed to go. If you want to be free, if you want to be holy, this is the track that you're supposed to go. But then we get to the Roman Catholic Church and... They didn't, they didn't prefer Greek. They didn't prefer Hebrew. They preferred Latin. There wasn't a word for that in Latin. What do we do? What do we do? Well, as a Roman, I like law. Lex. How many know we know the harshness of Roman law that was expressed in the world? at that time. You ticked off the wrong guy, you ended up crucified. That was Roman law. And it was from the Latin that we define what Torah means. Instead of as I'm meditating on it and I'm reading on it and I'm learning and I'm this little kid trying to hit the mark. And God's instruction as I meditate on it says, Mike, why don't you raise that thing up about five degrees and pull the bow back a little harder that way. You can at least hit the target. We'll work on the bullseye maybe here in a year or two. Now, wouldn't it sound absolutely stupid to say, I have been redeemed from the loving instruction of the Father? Maybe there was something else that Paul was addressing in the book of Romans. 
Just a thought. Because he actually said there were two laws. One was the harsh law, the lex of the kingdom of darkness that warred against the law of the spirit of life which was fully manifested in Christ Jesus. Just want to make you think about that. We have an emotional life. Let me tell you something. Emotions are the most fickle things on planet earth. And they can be manipulated. Oh my, I can't be manipulated. How many burly men cried when old Yeller died? Come on now. I have been known to shed a tear now and then during a rom-com. Doesn't affect my testosterone levels whatsoever to watch it with my wife. Although I quickly have to find an action movie to kind of, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, maybe not so much, but... <laughs> How many have been moved to tears in a 60-second commercial? How many have gotten up from a table full as a tick? That's also another Ozark expression. And a commercial comes on and rumbly, rumbly, there's a rumbly in my tumbly, I'm hungry. You are not hungry. That hunger is an emotion because they have learned... Mystery Babylon has learned to control you by emotions. Because emotions are illogical. How many remember puppy love? But dad, I'm going to die without her. Next week, you forget who she was. Because you're on now to girl number two, number three, number four. Or how many times have we been convinced by the world you just got to have this and you get it and you go, I can't believe I bought that. But it's the fanciest thing. It'll make you cool. Let me tell you something. This is the truth I've come across a long time ago. And I look myself in the mirror and remind me of, my, of this. Nothing on planet earth will ever make me look cool no matter what I own. <laughs> I'm just me. And the definition of coolness changes constantly. You remember, remember happy days in the Fonz? Hey, that was cool. Now we look at that and go, that was popular? All that's fickle can be controlled and redefined. And logic is nowhere in the equation. Logic. Political power, they use emotion to drive it and not logic because logic would reveal their nefarious schemes. But we need to choose to be a people that are moved by faith and not by how we feel. Because how I feel, I can actually crucify that. There's a lot of guys that felt the need to commit adultery. How many know that needs to be crucified? Quick. Quick. Or to cheat or to steal. But the thought life and the emotional life are, in, are like two chords that Mystery Babylon are still using like strings on a puppet over the assemblies of the redeemed. And man, they're using them over our politicians and over our scientists. You know, science is not science anymore. Hadn't been that way for years. How many have heard eating eggs will raise cholesterol? Okay. That's true if you eat dried eggs. Because we know after the Korean War that all of our guys came out of the Korean War because that's the way that they fit. You know, they never had fresh eggs in the mess hall. It was the dried eggs. All these guys come out with, heart, with artery disease because they were clogged. They needed roto-rooters. And so when they decided to come up with something called cereal, they had a scientific experiment. And lo and behold, in that scientific experiment, the ones in the test group were given dried eggs and never fresh, and their cholesterol went through the roof. Therefore, cereal is better than eggs. 
They've done the same thing with fat. They've done the same thing with so many things. And today, it's who controls the purse controls the outcome on so many levels. In fact, to find real, I think right now the real honest scientists are being banned and dismissed because the other ones have the money. The, prof, the prophets of Baal around Queen Jeze, Jezebel's table are controlling the narrative. I want pure science. Just to give you another one, they did a study here a couple years ago about vitamin E associated with heart attacks. Because there was a thought that, you know, taking high doses of vitamin E could stay a heart attack. Well, number one, when you dig into the company, the company that from the, the vitamin uh, E that they were using was, it was called Natural Vitamin E Company. Really creative, but it was synthetic vitamin E. Created by the pharmaceutical company that was hosting the study. But what was buried in the research, the headline was, Taking vitamin E will not prevent coronary disease. But what was hidden, even on synthetic vitamin E, there was a 92% drop in cancer. But I mean, you had to read down like 20, 30 paragraphs into Dr. Dead Brower did that and said, you know what? Vitamin E can prevent cancer in many areas. And even with synthetic vitamin E, they were able to, that was one of the unexpected outcomes. Got to bury that in the footnotes. So guys, quit being manipulated. Now, one of the things God showed me, I said, how do, how do I get rid of these tentacles? And he said, there are pathways of the kingdom, and there are the tentacles of Mystery Babylon. And he said, the tentacles of Mystery Babylon are the fruit of the flesh that Paul warns us about in Galatians. This is Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And I encourage you sometimes to, to uh, do a word study in every one of these Greek words that Paul uses. And now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions. Underline that one in your Word of God because that describes a lot of Washington, D.C. Dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, I also told you in past times, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, these are the works of the flesh. If you're doing them, you're in trouble. Why? Because the same guy who wrote Galatians wrote Romans chapter 6, okay, starting in verse 16. Do you not know to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are, the, you are the one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But, thank, but God be thanked that through you, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart the form of the doctrine which was delivered to you. And doctrine does not just mean belief system. It means how to live. Hebraically, you believed how to live contrary to how the world teaches you to live. Okay? And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So the truth of the matter is, either way you're a slave, but whose slave are you? Are you a bondservant of love, or are you a slave to sin? And I sp he said, I speak in human, human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you present your members as slaves of uncleanness and of unlawlessness, well, what does lawless mean? Those that oppose the Torah, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. All the things that are the works of the flesh, that if we allow those things to fester in our lives, we're, it, it, they are the, literally the tentacles of mystery Babylon to control your life. They have to be crucified. Strongholds of them in your soul have got to be torn down by the power of God. You've got to hit them head on. And one of the things I found out about strongholds, what the enemy loves to do, is to create a wound there and let that wound build the fort 
And then he builds a stronghold in the middle of it. And he's in there going, nanner, 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 because you're not going to go over the pain to get to what he's doing on the inside. But you know what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Jesus has already bore my pain. Why don't you let him bear the pain of that stronghold and take the inflammation out of that through giving it to him, surrendering to him, and then they have no walls to protect them. And then build a stronghold for God, a kingdom truth. Oh, guys, the, the works of the flesh are products of the iniquity force that makes us slaves. Our minds have got to be renewed, and it's hard to do. Sometimes you feel like you're about to lose your mind to get your mind. Because you're learning the word and God says that this way and you get into this situation, your emotions don't want to do it, your flesh don't want to do it, and you're, you're sitting there, you look like you're about ready to short out. And God, you know, God is saying, hold back heaven, angels, I want you to watch this. Mike's about ready to blow a fuse. What he does in the next couple of seconds is going to show you just how much he loves me. Because he's going to crucify that thing anyway. And I'm going to take his obedience as a reason to give him an upgrade. Every time that we're proven by God is so that we can pass the exam to get to the next grade. That's why the Bible tells us, you know, when you're tested, just praise God over it. He's getting ready to give me an upgrade. I'm going to see what I look like free of that. And then filled with this on the other side of the kingdom of God. Guys, these are the tasks of both the kingdom priesthood and the kingdom warriors. Sometimes before you're ever able to win the war on the outside and be truly effective in spiritual warfare, you've got to win the war on the inside. Otherwise, you're going to find, find yourself fighting for the enemy if you're not careful. As long as these works of the flesh are remain unchecked in the body of Christ, large portions are still living in Babylon and under its control. Biblical holiness is paramount to coming out of Babylon. We've got to rediscover what that is. How long have I been going? Should have set my watch. Besides those, and I'm, I'm going to really skip over these real quick. Another one they're using today and they're using an overdrive is fear. Fear porn. What kind of porn is that? It's called the evening news. And either it's this week's virus, and if the virus dies down, they immediately go back to climate control, climate change. Let me tell you something, climate's always changing. And see, in the 90s, they tried to go with climate cooling. Then one of them read the book of Revelation, there's going to be scorching heat in the last days. So let's go with things heating up. Even though there is some evidence by those who study the sun, we could actually be entering into a mini ice age, but that's just a whole other ball of wax. Okay. But we need to understand that mainstream media are the prophets of all, And they can look straight in the camera and look sincere and lie through their teeth. And their salary is based upon how convincing they can be reading the narrative. Now I documented my first book, we have not had real newspapers and real news agencies since the dawn of the 20th century. The fourth estate no longer exists. It's propaganda. Right. And it is controlled. Do you want to see how quick that they, uh, local TV years ago, there was uh, a whole thing came up and they, they said, you know, certain people are getting out of traffic tickets in this town. Could the sheriff be a Freemason? So Mary and I waited, you know, story at 10. By the time 10 o'clock got there, the story never happened. Shh, 
Fellow Masons don't get off the hook for speeding? How many times have we been... One person on MSNBC was taken to court. And I verified this story from three different sources. I'm not going to mention the individual's name. But for slander that she literally, as a part of her news broadcast, slandered this individual. Outright lie. He said, I've had enough. I'm taking you to court. I can prove in court you slandered me on the news. This person's response was, what I do is not news, it's entertainment. On a news channel. So if it's not news, why is it on a news channel and why are you presenting it authoritatively as the news? It is opinion. And how many know opinions are like belly buttons? Some are deeper than others and some are just full of lint. Okay. We need to, we need to understand that they are controlling everything by fear. Fear will cause citizens to run to the bank and empty out the bank. It's called a run on the bank. Here's one of recent memory. All of a sudden you blink and there's no toilet paper anywhere to be found. And there's somebody didn't think this thing through and they have 10,000 rolls of toilet paper but nothing to eat. Not too smart, but you see the toilet paper fear button was hit but not the food button. That our toilet paper companies running 24 hours a day can't make enough toilet paper because somebody has to have 10,000 rolls in the back room of the house. All because of fear. Fear caused Nazis to round up Jews and take them to concentration camps telling the Jews it was for their protection as they were planning their, ex their extermination because they used fear to motivate the populace. There's us and there's them. Us good, them bad. Everything that goes wrong, even as if it's because of our stupid policies, it was them that did it. And it doesn't even have to be about, you know, taking a vaccine. That tomorrow could be about something else. But there are concentration camps around the world to include in the United States of America. They need to be tore down in Jesus' name. You can call them happy camps. You can call them anything you want. But if that, 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 bo that barbed wire on the outside is facing like this, it's to keep people out, keep, not to keep people in, no, to keep people in, not to keep people out. It's concentration camps. It should never be had in a free society, but they used fear. Quit being moved by fear. Be moved by faith. What is God saying? What is God telling you in this hour? Isaac sowed in a famine and got a bumper harvest. God can tell you sometimes the most outlandish things to do, but when his power is behind it, you're going to come up smelling like roses. How many know what the fruit of the Spirit is? That's moving in the kingdom. I'm going to finish with one story because I do, literally do not know how long. He's preaching for an hour and a half, Betty. All right. That's, I smell chili. It's, it's calling to me too. Well, isn't that the flesh? Yeah, it is. Kind of. But there's anointing in that chili. I know that. There was a man back when they were building something called interstates. Anybody know what an interstate is? And he was a minister, and while his wife was away, he emptied his bank account and went and bought a useless piece of dirt. Dirt cheap. His wife comes home and says, where is our savings? Bought a piece of dirt. Well, Henry, you moron, why did you take our life savings? You know, it's hard enough on the, on the income of a minister to have savings, but to spend all of it, you've got to be kidding me. This was in Texas. He said, woman, God told me to buy that piece of land. Six months later, it was announced 
that the, two, the crossways of the two interstates was crossing on that piece of property, and they were going to build a giant hotel there, and he was setting on what used to be dirt was now multi-million dollar property. Are, are you getting it? God can cause the cruel of the cruise of oil to keep pouring when it shouldn't be pouring. God can cause the flour to keep being there and filling up the bowl when it shouldn't be. Faith always outdoes fear. And as big as the effect that fear can do, the ability and effect of faith is endless because you start getting into all things or possible. Guys, we got to get untangled and feed our faith. And one of the ways to do it is quit trying to figure out how much time you got left here and start figuring out how to live for the kingdom while you're here. Amen. Jesus says, when I come back, Will I find anybody trying to calculate the time that I come back? Because they're going to get a special prize. He said, will Jesus, he said, will I find faithfulness when I come back? Will I find faithfulness to the kingdom when I come back? Will I find faith in the earth when I come back? I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best. Well, Father... We just thank you for the message today. Father, give us supernatural abilities to untangle Mystery Babylon out of our lives. Father, let us do the work that we can get free so that we can live for you, spirit, soul, and body, and be an example of a kingdom citizen in planet Earth that can bring the power of our king into every situation we ask. Lord, we ask that you would correct us, that you would lead us and guide us, that you would open our eyes, take off the blinders of Mystery Babylon that we can see. And Father, give us your grace to be effective in what we do in our kingdom tasks, we ask in Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the Kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principality's wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The Kingdom Priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. 
We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store dot biblical dash life dot com that store dot biblical dash life dot com